Hi, I'm Samitha Rao. And I'm Kelly Bond, and we are both seniors at Baton Rouge Magnet High School. And a part of our AP Art History class, we got the experience or opportunity to visit the NOMA, or the New Orleans Museum of Art. So at the museum, we picked two pieces of artwork from the African exhibit. And now in this presentation, we are comparing and contrasting those two artworks to show the traditions and change in African culture. The artwork that I chose was the Ancestor Memorial Screen, um, or also known as the Duyen Fubara, made by the Kalabari people in the late 19th uh, or early 20th century in Nigeria. And it was made out of wood, wicker, and pigment. And I got all of my info um, about the Duyen Fubara uh, from artsconnected.org. And I chose the figure of Mama Wata, or Janice Densu, um, by the, created by the Iwi peoples. And I got all of my information from the University of Washington. So the first image that we're going to talk about is the Du Yen Fubara, or the Ancestor Memorial Screen. And I'm going to start by giving you all a little bit of the context. So the Kalabari, who made this piece, are known for their extensive skill in trade. In Kalabari culture, Duyen is the term used to describe the most prominent member of a trading family, and Fubara means forehead. The Kalabari believe that a person's life force, or living spirit, is held in their forehead. Another Kalabari belief is that their ancestors have significant influence over their daily lives. This artwork is known as the Duyen Fubara because the Kalabari believe it holds the life force of the most powerful deceased family member. In other words, the practice of creating the ancestor memorial screen is a long-established tradition that not only gives a powerful ancestor a final resting place, which shows that it has a spiritual function, but it also allows the ancestor to watch over the family and allows the family to ensure that the ancestral spirit is under control, which shows that it has a personal function. So next I'll talk a little bit about the content. So the artist of the Duyen Fubara used hierarchy of scale to depict the importance of the ancestor it was created for. The entire piece is built to be hung on a wall. In the center of the wooden frame, you can see that there's a tall male, and two smaller males are flanking both sides of his body. Their gender can be determined by the emphasis placed on their pectoral muscles, which shows the male's strength and power. The tall male is the depiction of the ancestor whose spirit is being stored, and the two males are his guards. All three men are sitting. Above the wooden frame, two heads are watching over the three seated men. These two heads are depictions of ancestors who passed away before the tall man did, and they're watching over his spirit as well as the family. Now I'll tell you guys a little bit about the form of this piece. So this piece was made out of natural resources found in Nigeria, which shows that the Kalabari took advantage of their local surroundings. All three seated men have white pigment dots along their chests, which could represent body paint or scarification, which was the cultural practice of etching symbolic designs into the skin. The limbs of all three men are attached to the body separately. These separated limbs are a depiction of how the Kalabari use their bodies in a very practical way. Their faces are more stylized than naturalistic, and the eyes are the most prominent facial feature because they are painted with a lighter color. All faces in the artwork have larger lips and noses, which are features commonly found in African art. All figures depicted are also wearing crowns, although the tall man in the center has the biggest crown. His crown is most ornately decorated and has two eyes in the center of it. This symbolizes how he is watching over the family and channeling his ancestral en energy, along with the energies of past ancestors, into his family's daily lives. Moving on to the next artwork of John Stensu or Mami Wati. This figure was created by the Iwi peoples of either Ghana or Toga in the 20th century using wood and pigment. Mami Wata was very significant to the African descent. During the 16th and 19th centuries, millions of Africans were enslaved and forcibly removed from their homelands and carried across the Atlantic Ocean. And for them, Mami Wata was their only source of hope. 
Having had influenced by indigenous water spirits, European mermaids, snake charmers, Hindu gods and goddesses, as well as Christian and Muslim workers, the Iwi peoples created Mami Wata, which served as a devotional, economic, and political aspiration. They looked to her with their concerns related to infertility, impotence, infant mortality, and other procreation ideas. Some even looked to Mami Wati as a spiritual force with a seductive presence that offered pleasure and power. She was the epitome of unattainable beauty, power, and goodness that the Africans worshipped. She was a complex, multifocal icon that fed human imagination and generated multiple meanings to the Iwi peoples. First and foremost, the audience should be aware of the figure's large, round breast. The figure's breast emphasize that the figure is indeed a female, and also suggests that she served as a paragon for desired fertility. Mami Wata's mermaid tail makes her half human and half fish, indicating that she straddles land and water, also culture and nature, as she is the mother of water. The artist also strategically placed a snake on top of the figure's head as well as around her neck, possibly serving as protection or guardianship. Mami Wata was recognized as a snake charmer, which in many cultures symbolizes the victory of good over evil. She also has two heads, which indicates a sense of duality between life and death, the fact that there can be no life without death similar to that of the Tatlico female figures. Anyone that wanted to communicate with Mami Wata was required to sacrifice something substantial, such as life of a family member, which signifies the duality that she represented, having one thing or the other. The way that Mami Wata holds her hands in a circle indicate a sense of wholeness and eternity, which does contradict the idea of duality presented earlier. African cultures really stressed the power of water because it was a source of not only sustenance, but also a focus of spiritual and artistic expression. She was their nurturing mother, provider of riches, healer of physical and spiritual ills, and the embodiment of dangers, desires, risks, challenges, dreams, aspirations, and fears. She was looked at as a deity that Africans worshipped. And throughout Africa, you can find multiple different depictions of her. So now we'll be discussing the traditions and changes associated with both the artworks. The tradition of creating ancestor memorial screens began centuries ago, and it served both personal and religious functions since then. A wide variety of memorial screens have been created, um, as each family that creates one adds designs to help distinguish it from others. The tradition of creating figures such as Mami Wata also began centuries ago and has both personal and religious functions as well. A wide variety of figures have been created that represent the unattainable beauty, power, and goodness that Mami Wata represents. And each of these figures is created with distinct details that set it apart from others. Both pieces of artwork were created with natural resources found in the area that they were made in. And both also reflect the African belief that certain animate objects hold spiritual forces. The ancestor memorial screen holds the life force and spirits of a prominent ancestor, while figures such as Mami Wata hold spirits um, of water and fertility. And as for the change from the 19th to 20th centuries, the focus of African art um, shifted. The ancestor memorial screen, um, they were made to help to hold life forces of like the head of the family, which were particularly always males. Um, this is the depiction, this is a great depiction of um, the women's social status in the Calabar culture. And moving into the 20th century, the female figures such as Mami Wata became prominent as symbols of fertility and power, so women's roles changed. Um, also, looking at both artworks, it's evident that in the 20th century, African art became more naturalistic and really reduced the use of stylistic techniques. So, you're going to make something. I chose this artwork 
um, because as soon as I walked into the African exhibit, um, this image reminded me of an image that we studied before in art history, uh, which is the Oba plaque. Um, and I, I saw the similarity um, in the formal features, um, and I decided it would be a good piece to analyze because uh, the Oba plaque was one of my favorite uh, images that we learned about in African culture. Okay, so at my first glimpse of this figure of um, Mami Wata, I immediately thought of the Tatlico Pretty Ladies and was just extremely mesmerized by the multiple arms protruding out of this half-human, half-fish body. It really captures the ideal feminine beauty that um, African art um, worshipped, and I really wanted to further study that. So that's why I chose it. Um, so yeah. thank you guys for watching our vlog, and I hope you guys got a better understanding of African art and African culture as well.